Welcome to the second past paper run through. Uh, remember, I won't be going through the six mark question answers in this video because they're a bit too long and complicated. So make sure you get the answers to those six mark questions from your teacher before you leave the room, as well as picking up the next paper when you finish this video. Just another reminder that if you see any questions with numbers in, especially in the physics uh, section, then there's all these equations in the front to help you. So always refer to this because often the answer is staring in the face if you look at this uh, this equation sheet. So, first section is biology. It says the diagram shows an eye of a short-sighted person, person looking at a distant object. And it says explain how the lens being the wrong shape can cause short sight. So there's two marks for this. Um, so the first mark is saying that it could be too rounded or the lens is too powerful or too thick, that I get the first mark. And then the second mark is saying that it focuses light before the retina, or we could say it refracts or bends the light too much. So two marks there, one for talking about the lens and its shape, so it's either too rounded or too powerful or too thick. And the second mark is saying what well, it does to the light, so it focuses the light before the retina, or we could say it bends or refracts the light too much. Next question says, short sight can be corrected by wearing glasses. Write down the type of lens used in these glasses, that's concave for that one mark. Um, you could also have um, diverging, so diverging would also get you the mark there. And then next question, scientists have found a rare genetic disorder that can cause short sight. It's called nanophalmos. This is caused by a recessive allele. What is an allele? Um, and that is a version of a gene. So one mark there for saying a version of a gene. Next question says, look at this part of the family tree showing some people with nanophthalmos. Um, so you can see that there's parents without it, but children with it. And it says, this is caused by a recessive allele. How can you tell us from, this family, from the family tree? So remember, a recessive allele is one um, where if you have the dominant one, then that is the thing, that's what you show. Um, that takes precedent over the recessive one, but if you have two recessive ones, one from each of your parents, then that's the thing that shows. So here, the parents have given one recessive gene each to the children. All you have to put here for these two marks is that uh, neither Seema or John have the disorder or the condition, but, that's for one mark, but their children do, and that's the second mark. Next question says, Jane is a carrier of nanophalmos. Um, Jay marries Simon who has nanophalmos. What is the probability of their first child having the disorder? You must draw a genetic diagram to work out your answer and use capital N for normal vision and N for the allele for nanophalmos. Um, so, what I would do here is the following. So, Jane is just a carrier, so she has a dominant gene and a recessive gene, but Simon has it, so he must have two recessive genes. So, these are the combinations that you could have. So, these two here will have it, but these two wouldn't. So, is it a 50% chance of their children getting this condition? Next question says, Tim and Daisy are discussing the legal drug cannabis. Tim says, I think cannabis should be a class B drug. Cannabis makes reflexes slower. It can speed up heart rate and cause vasodilation. It can also affect long-term memory. Daisy says, I don't think cannabis should be a class B drug. It is less addictive than smoking tobacco and it only produces mild hallucinogenic effects. Uh, Tim thinks cannabis should be a class B drug. Explain why illegal drugs are put into different classes. So for two marks here, you can say... Um, First mark is that some drugs are more harmful or dangerous than others, um, or you can say it depends how harmful or dangerous they are, so that's your first mark. And then uh, the second mark is saying that that affects the penalty for using them or, or uh, p possessing them. Um, so first one, that some drugs are more dangerous than others. Second mark is saying that affects the penalty for using them. Um, Next question says, Daisy says that cannabis has hallucinogenic effects. Write down over one other drug that has these effects. So that's LSD, but also if you put stuff like magic mushrooms or PCP or ketamine, uh, they would also get you a mark. You don't get a mark for cocaine, heroin, alcohol or ecstasy. So marks are for either LSD, magic mushrooms, PCP or ketamine. Tim says cannabis causes vasodilation. What is vasodilation? So that's the widening of the blood vessels. Um, you could also say the widening of arteries or capillaries. 
Um, you could say that blood vessels dilate or they open up or they expand or get bigger. So all of those things will get you that one mark. And then cannabis prevents the release of neurotransmitter chemical in the brain. Explain how this could prevent the proper function of the brain. So again, this is two marks. So you get one mark for saying there's um, less neurotransmitter or chemical to bind with the next neuron. Um, and then you say that could prevent nerve impulses passing from neuron to neuron um, across the synapse. So one mark for saying that there's less neurotransmitter or less chemical to bind with the next neuron. Um, you could have a mark for saying that prevents nerve impulses passing from neuron to neuron. And you get a mark for saying that that's across the synapse as well. So three possible marks there. You just need any two of those. Next question says, scientists uh, compare the danger drugs by working out their therapeutic ratio. And this is worked out like this. And it says, the table, the data on the table is for a 100 kilogram man. Giving cannabis to rats kills them when the dose is around 750 milligrams per, uh, per kilogram of rat. Work out the therapeutic ratio of cannabis for a cannabis for a 100 kilogram man. Assume that cannabis has the same effect as humans on, uh, on humans as rats. Write your answer on the table. So the first thing you need to work out, if you look, to work out the therapeutic ratio of the lethal dose. So if 750 milligrams is what you need per kilo, and there's 100 kilograms of man, then you need to do 100 times 750 to work out the lethal dose, and that is 75,000. And then to work out the therapeutic ratio is the lethal dose, so that's 75,000, divided by uh, the smallest dose needed to have an effect, so that's 15, and that equals 5,000. And then which drug do the scientists think is most dangerous? Use the data to explain your answer. So there's two marks here. Um, saying heroin doesn't get you a mark, but that is the correct answer. So you need to state that it's heroin, but to get the marks, you have to say either it has the smallest lethal dose, um, the smallest therapeutic ratio would also get you a mark, and then you could also say because the smallest dose you need to have an effect is very close to the lethal dose, it's very easy to have an overdose of this. So heroin, then that wouldn't get you a mark, and then any two of these three, it has the smallest lethal dose for a mark, has a smallest therapeutic ratio, and you're more likely to overdose because the smallest dose needed is very close to the lethal dose. So the chemistry section next. It says this question is about carbon compounds. Look at the displayed formulae of these compounds. So there's ethanoic acid, ethanol, ethene, methane, and methanol. It says explain how you can tell. Oh, it says methane is an alkane. Explain how you can tell from the displayed formula. So Basically, what you've got to say is that it, could, that it contains single bonds, and you must make sure you say the word only. So con this contains single bonds only, and that's what makes it an alkane. It says, write down the name of a compound that is an unsaturated hydrocarbon, choosing the compound shown. So unsaturated means that it has a double bond. Hydrocarbon means it only has hydrogen and carbon. So the first thing is that it has a double bond, so that's your choices are ethanoic acid and ethene, but ethanoic acid has oxygen, so it must be ethene. So your answer, the answer to question B is ethene. So let's write down the molecular form of ethanoic acid. So if we look at ethanoic acid, um, we've got one, two carbons, so C2, and then H. How many H's? You've got one, two, three, four, and then you've got two oxygens. You can write those in any order. So you could have O2, H4, C2, or whatever. Uh, and then ethene reacts with bromine to form dibromoethane. Write a balanced symbol equation for this reaction. Now, if there are two marks for a balanced symbol equation, then it needs balancing. But if there's only one mark, then it's already balanced once you write it out. So there's a little trick to help you in the exam. And so first thing you do is draw an arrow. Write what's made on the right-hand side. And write what's reacting together on the left. So ethene, you can work out the molecular formula from the from the picture above, C2H4, and then bro means Br2, which is given to you. So that's the answer for that one. Next question: John and Sue are building a new house. They want to choose the best fuel for the house. They find out some information about four possible fuels, and there there are. Which fuel should John and Sue choose? Explain your choice. So you don't get a mark for the fuel that you choose, but you do get two marks for explaining. So the first mark for saying, well, sorry, there's no mark for saying this, but the choice is oil. And then the two marks are saying that oil is easy to use or coal is not easy to use. So that's your first mark. And the second mark is saying that oil is available or natural gas is not available. 
Next question says, LPG contains propane gas, C3H8. Write a balanced symbol equation for the complete combustion of propane and oxygen O2. So there are two marks this time, so this does need balancing. So first thing, draw an arrow, and you've got C3H8. And that is combusting, so it's reacting with oxygen. And then it's making, if complete combustion, you need to know that it makes CO2 and water. Now to balance these equations, first thing you want to do is balance the carbons. There are three carbons here, but only one here. So you need a three in front of the carbon dioxide. Then balance the hydrogens. So you've got eight here, two here. So you need four waters to get eight uh, hydrogens on the right-hand side. And then balance oxygens last. So you've now got uh, six oxygens from the carbon dioxide and four oxygens from the water so overall you've got ten oxygens so therefore you need 5O2 to have ten oxygens on the left hand side as well so you get one mark for the symbols and then one mark for the balancing uh, there's a question about paint and it says emulsion paint is one type of paint explain how, or sorry, describe how emulsion paint drives um, only one mark. All you've got to say is that solvent evaporates. Or you could say, because emulsion paint, uh, the solvent is water, you could say that the water evaporates. That's all you've got to put there. Next question, look at the table. It's to give some information about pigments. Which pigment would be useful on a kettle of boiling water? Um, so you don't get a mark for your choice, but it's pigment C. And then your marks are saying, um, firstly, because pigment C is a thermochromic pigment, so that's your first mark, or you could say it changes colour when the temperature increases. You can see that A, B and D do not, they stay at the same colour. Um, C changes colour when it's heated. And then um, give a reason why that's important. So you could say it can act as a warning as the kettle heats up, or it will indicate when the water is boiling, or indicate when the water is hot. So one mark is saying it's a thermochromic pigment, or it changes colour when the temperature increases. And then a second mark is saying that that will then act as a warning when the kettle eats up or that the water is hot. Paint is a colloid. A colloid, a colloid contains pigment particles mixed with particles of a liquid. Explain why the pigment particles and liquid particles do not separate. Two marks. So first mark is saying that the pigment is dispersed throughout the mixture, or the solid is dispersed throughout the mixture, and then the second mark is saying the particles are sufficiently small or small enough so they won't settle to the bottom. Or you could say they're too small and therefore too light to settle to the bottom. Next question is about polymers. It says polychloroethene is a polymer. Polychloroethene is made from monomer called chloroethene, which is there. And you've got to draw the displayed formula of the polymer from the monomer. So the first thing to do is to draw the two C's in the polymer without the double bond. And remember that double bond is broken and therefore the bonds are on, have gone side, sideways. Draw brackets so that the bracket crosses these bonds. And then just draw the four things that are around the carbons in the first place. So you've got two H's on the first carbon, so an H and an H. And then you have an H and a Cl on the other carbon, so H and Cl. Next question says, the plastic made from the polymer polychloroethene can be used to make water pipes. Sorry, if you go back... You can also put an N there to sim symbolise that lots of those join together. If you didn't put the N, then you wouldn't lose the mark. The plastic made from the polychloroethene can be used to make water pipes. One property of polychloroethene is that it is easy to shape. Write about other properties of polychloroethene that make it suitable for making water pipes. So, there's two marks here, so you want to put two properties. So... One is that it uh, doesn't dissolve in water, or it's waterproof, or it's leak-proof, or it's not porous, or it's insoluble in water. That would get one mark. Second mark, you could say it doesn't corrode, or it doesn't react with the water, or it's non-biodegradable. And then you could also get a mark for saying that it's non-toxic, or it's not poisonous. You could also get a mark for saying that it's strong. Um, but that's all the marks. That's all the marking points. Next question uh, says, look at the diagrams. They show structures of two plastics. Plastic A can be stretched easily. Explain why. Two marks. So you've got to talk about the intermolecular forces between the polymer chains, or you could say the bonds between the polymer chains um, are weak. Um, so notice there aren't any bonds really holding these polymer chains together. So you've got to say the intermolecular forces or bonds between the polymer chains are weak. 
for the first mark. And then, so therefore, the polymer molecules can slide over each other easily. Or you could say the intermolecular forces are therefore easy to break. Um, you could also get marks saying the polymer chains are not connected together, or there's no cross-linking, or there's no bonds between the polymer chains. Uh, and you could say the molecules are therefore easy to separate from each other. Plastic B has a high melting point. Explain why. Um, and that's based just because there are strong bonds between the polymer molecules. So that's all you need to put. Uh, so you could say strong intermolecular bonds or strong bonds between the polymers. Or you could say there's covalent bonds between the polymer molecules. And that's enough to get that mark. So last section, the physics section. Uh, so the question says, Amir investigated the cooling of two liquids. Both liquids had a mass of 350 grams. Look at the graph of his results. There it is. And it says, it suggests why liquid B cools quicker than liquid A at the start of this experiment. So you've got to talk about the fact it has a lower specific heat capacity. So you have to say B has a lower specific heat capacity than A, or you could say that A has a higher specific heat capacity than B. It says, what is the direction of the energy flow and what is the effect on the surroundings? So um, here you've got to say that the energy flows from the liquid to the surroundings, or the surroundings warm up because the liquid has given energy to the surroundings. It says, calculate energy that was transferred for liquid A in part X to the graph. The specific latent heat of A is 200,000 joules per kilogram. Um, so it tells you that it has a mass of 350 grams. So the first thing you've got to do is convert 350 into kilograms. So 350 grams into kilograms. So it's 350 divided by 1,000 equals 0.35. Then to work out the, specific, uh, work out the energy transferred with the latent heat, it's just mass in kilograms times specific latent heat and that gives you 70,000 joules. So the next question says describe and explain what is happening during part X of the graph while this energy is being transferred. Um, so describing it is that there's a change of state or you could say that it's freezing. So I get your mark and then um, d explaining it is that the reason why it doesn't change temperatures is because bonds are being formed. Um, so, first mark saying there's a change of state, and second mark saying that bonds are formed. Next question says, John installs a solar water heating unit on the roof of his house. Look at the diagram of the unit. There it is. It says, energy is transferred through parts of the unit by different methods. What is the main method of energy transfer from above the glass to the surface of the cylinder? And that is radiation. So you had three choices there, conduction, convection, or radiation, and that's radiation. It says, the black cylinder absorbs energy and transfers it to the water inside. Explain how the water inside then heats up. So, first thing you've got to talk about convection. Um, so, the first markers are talking about, or saying convection. Um, and the second markers are saying that the water expands, or the density falls. Um, so, it's the idea that the water moves because of convection. So, the warm water rises up because the water is expanding. Uh, these solar water heating units have an efficiency of 85%. Calculate the useful energy output for every 200,000 joules of energy input. So there's a, an equation for efficiency in the in the front, and it says efficiency equals useful energy divided by total energy giving put in. So to work out the um, useful energy given out, you're going to do 200,000 times 85 over 100 to turn the percentage into a decimal. And that gives you 170,000. Next question just says, describe how one feature of the solar water heating unit has helped to produce this high level of energy efficiency. So you could any, have any one of these three things. You could say that double glaze top traps the air or reduces convection or it's a good insulator. You could say the black surface of the cylinder is a good absorber of radiation. Or you could talk about the shiny surface that reflects the radiation back in. So any one of those three. Next question says, some infrared waves have a wavelength of one millimetre. The speed of electromagnetic waves is three times 10 to the eight meters per second. Show using calculation the frequency of the wave, infrared waves is three times 10 to the 11. So you need to go to the front of your paper and find the wave speed um, formula. So um, to work out frequency, you've got to do um, the speed divided by the wavelength. 
Now, here the speed is in meters per second, but your wavelength's in millimeters. So you've got to convert your um, millimeters into meters. So one millimeter will equal 0 0.001 meters. And then 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 0 0.001 equals 3 times 10 to the 11. So this is the part you needed for those two marks. Then the infrared waves which heat the metal cylinder have much shorter wavelengths. Explain how the energy of these waves is different to those with a wavelength of 1 millimeter. So notice it says um, explain. So basically you could say that a shorter wavelength means a higher frequency for one mark and then say that a higher frequency means that it has a greater energy for your second mark. Finally it says Ricky is interested in radio and TV. Ricky has a portable analogue radio that he listens to at different places in his house and out in the garden. His favourite station is showing the table. There they all are. And it says while listening to one of these stations, he often hears another station on his radio, which two stations can Ricky hear at the same time. So you're looking for stations that have um, frequencies that are very close to each other. So the two frequencies that are closest to each other are real radio and smooth FM. So those are the two that you need to put down. Uh, so that'll get you one mark. And then explaining it is that the frequencies are very close for your second mark. Many radio stations have switched to DAB broadcasting. If Ricky switches to a radio using a DAB signal, he would not hear two stations at once. Write down one other advantage of a DAB signal. So this is about a digital signal over an analog signal. So you could say that the, it enables more stations or programs or more information. Um, but you could also say that the interference can be removed or the noise can be removed. You could say that it has a better quality final signal. Um, or you could say that it has improved sound quality. So that's the end of that paper, so make sure you collect the six mark question answers from your teacher as you leave and make sure you get the paper for next week as well as you leave.